Functions can get a little rowdy sometimes, running all over the graph. That's why we like to keep them contained within a reasonable range and in a carefully designated domain. Where am I going with all of this? You'll find out soon. Let's start by defining domain in math terms. The domain is the set of all possible values of x that work in a given function. Before we try a real question, let's review an algebraic rule that you might encounter. An example is this simple function, f of x equals 2 divided by x. The rule is that any values of x that make the denominator 0 won't be in the domain. That means for the function f of x equals 2 over x, the function is undefined when the denominator x equals 0. So in our example, x can't be 0, which means the domain of this function is all real numbers that are not equal to 0. Remember this rule in case you encounter it. An ACT question might ask, what is the domain of the function? Or, when is this function undefined? Both of these questions ask you to find all the possible values of x. Let's look at a test question and see how this works. For which non-negative value of x is the expression 1 over 16 minus x squared undefined? f is 256, g is 32, h is 16, j is 4, and k is 0. We'll start by underlining the facts, circling the keywords, and labeling the answer choices. Because we're looking for the answer choice that makes the function undefined, we can easily back-solve this question. So we need an answer that makes the denominator equal to 0. So let's start with answer choice h, which is 16. Using our calculator, we find that 16 minus 16 squared equals negative 240. That's wrong because the denominator doesn't equal 0, which means the function isn't undefined. So we can cross out choice h. Because we know we need a smaller number, next, let's try a smaller number, like choice j. Let's make x in the denominator 4. 4 squared equals 16, and 16 minus 16 equals 0. That means the function is undefined when x equals 4, so that's the right answer. Circle choice j. Now that we've discussed domain, let's review how to find the range of a function. The range of a function is all of the possible values of y. These problems can be a little tricky, so graphing the functions is the safest way to find all of the possible values of y. Let's look at an ACT problem that asks us to find the range of a quadratic function. Let function f of x equals x squared minus 3 be defined for negative 2 is less than x is less than 4. The range of f of x is… The answer choices represent the possible range of y values. As always, we'll underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. Let's input this equation into our graphing calculator into y1. In school, you might have been taught to use the table function, but we can more easily see all of the possible values of y if we graph the function by pushing the graph button. The graph will let us see all of the y values between x equals negative 2 and x equals 4. In order to find the value of y at x equals negative 2, let's use the trace function on the calculator. Punch trace, negative 2, enter. The calculator will display the y coordinate at the bottom right of the screen. When x equals negative 2, y equals 1. Using the same trace function to find the y coordinate when x equals 4, we find that when x is 4, y is 13. If we just find the y values at these two points, we might be tempted to say that the range of all possible y values when x is between negative 2 and 4 is from 1 to 13, but we'd be wrong. Because it's a parabola and includes y values lower than negative that actually go as low as negative 3. So the range of f of x when x is between negative 2 and 4 is actually as low as y equals negative 3 and as high as y equals 13. So choice D is the correct answer. Nice job. What if a question asks for the minimum value of x for the same function? Let's look at an example. Let function f of x equals x squared minus 3. What is the minimum value of f of x? The minimum value is always the smallest value of y, so the answer would be negative 3, since the smallest y value of this function is negative 3. Some questions ask you for the maximum value of a function, which means they're asking for the biggest y value of the function. We use the same method for finding the minimum. 
Domain and range of functions aren't so scary if you remember that graphs will help you visualize the possible answers. Now, make sure you take advantage of all the practice problems we have available for you throughout this course.